guys, and welcome to another episode of Ellie in Space. I want to talk about an experiment that Starlink is doing in France. But first, check out my shirt. I got this cool Cybertruck shirt at the Cyber Roundup, and I have plenty of content that I am going to be editing over the next few days and weeks. I have so much to keep me busy, so you won't want to miss any of it. But let's talk about what is going on with the cost of Starlink in France. So Starlink sent a letter to French customers saying that they will be imposing high-speed data caps but the monthly cost will drop. So under this new policy, users in France could experience slower speeds once they exceed a 250 gigabyte data download limit. This is according to that message that SpaceX sent that obviously I had to have translated because I don't speak French. Now this is all in an effort to cut down on congestion. SpaceX sent out that message to French users about the impending change and this is a pilot program. So will we see it in other places? People are speculating probably because they have to have some sort of management for data usage. So the letter reads, effective August 3rd, 2022, Starlink is reducing your monthly service fee in mainland France from 99 euros per month to 50 euros per month, according to this message. So the cost has already been halved, but starting in October, things will change if you use a lot of your data. According to the letter, it states that in October, the company plans on implementing a quote, fair use policy, which may involve slowing down users' internet speeds once they exceed a 250 gigabyte monthly cap and if capacity over the network has been stretched. For more high-speed data, users will need to pay more. So the users who use less or consume 250 gigabytes of data or less per month will be prioritized. So the users who are hogging all the data or exceeding that limit will still have access to unlimited data, but they could experience slower speeds. This would be during times of network congestion and users could also choose to purchase additional data to recover priority status at 10 euros per 100 gigabytes. And the letter goes on to state Starlink's goal with this upcoming change is to connect the greatest number of people without degrading the quality of service. But as we have known from the beginning when it was the better than nothing beta phase, one of the exciting things was no data caps. So it, this probably will upset some subscribers if you use a lot of data. So this is kind of the first experiment with these data caps, but we probably could expect it to happen here in North America. And that is because in recent months, customers in North America have been seeing those slower speeds. And this is likely due to congestion from too many neighboring Starlink users using the space internet. Now, of course, these problems will continue to be solved as more satellites are launched. In his most recent interview, Elon says there are over 2,000 in service. Soon there will be up to 4,000, but of course there's plans for thousands and thousands more. However, this takes time. The letter also specifies that during times of network congestion, the network prioritizes other users over power users, which may result in slower speeds for power users in proportion to their network usage. However, during non-congested periods, power user speeds are not throttled. So seeing as I have never been an IT person, I decided to read more on the Reddit thread and someone who has managed a lot of networks gives us some, what I think is really great insight. Comments on pizza says, I'm personally not against reasonable network management, but that can end up in a bad place depending on how it's done. First, I'd note that 350 gigabytes is the average American household usage in a month on both Xfinity and T-Mobile home internet. And they bring up a good point saying, what happens after the 250 gigabytes is exceeded? How deprioritized do users get? This person goes on to say it definitely isn't cool, but network management is essential I've worked on a network at a university and the top 50 users out of 10,000 would often use more than 50% of the bandwidth. There weren't any punitive actions taken against the users, but lighter users were given priority when we're all sharing something we need to figure out how to share it fairly. And it's not just residential customers that are
are trying to sign up for Starlink and want the service, the US Air Force is also signing up for Starlink after seeing how well it's working and keeping people connected in Ukraine. The US Air Force is now awarding Starlink a contract for satellite internet in Europe and Africa. And this is a 12 month, almost $2 million contract that was awarded in late July. It's set to begin sometime between August and July of 2023. Starlink is the only commercial company that can provide low earth orbit satellite communications in both Europe and Africa, according to this document. The US Air Force acknowledges that Starlink is the most well-established LEO satellite network and the competitors are still in their infancy. So I wanna know from you guys, do you foresee a similar letter in English coming to us in North America to manage this network and the data usage issue? I wanna know from you in the comments. Also, I want you to get excited because I just spent almost a week in Austin, Texas. I gathered so much content while I was there. Here's like just a little sneak preview of some of the things you can get excited for. We went to where Cyberlander is being developed. That is the RV for the Cybertruck. Okay, I feel a little nervous for this. I don't want to break it. I feel like this is going to be like that uh, Cybertruck. <laughs> oh my God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. <laughs> Accident. I'm pretty strong, Lance. I don't know. I'm a rock climber. So yeah, that's a sneak peek of my test of the material that the Cyberlander is being constructed with. You will not want to miss this video and this product is extremely exciting. Cannot wait until it is released. We also have another update coming for new communities. So a lot of you have seen my new community video number one. This is an update as things progress and we are getting closer to assembling and manufacturing these homes at scale. And number three, we're gonna have a lovely Neuralink update with the person who's most in tune with Neuralink, Ryan Tanaka of Neuropod. So that's just a little sneak peek. I have a lot of editing to do over the next few days, so I'm gonna get going. But if you like this video, please make sure to like it. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already as it helps the channel out and it's completely free and I will see you in the next video. Bye.